Daniel chapter 6, brothers and sisters, this is where we're going. Daniel chapter 6. And uh, we're going to begin looking at the familiar passage once again. But looking at familiar passage helps us to understand better where we are today. And as we can see all around us, the signs of the times that Jesus had foretold in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 21, we looked at that the past two Sabbath, and they are being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. The Bible asks a question in 2 Peter chapter 3, as we see all these things begin to come to pass, what manner of people ought we to be in these last days? And Daniel, I believe, in the book of Daniel chapter 6, shows us the kind of people that we need to be in these last days. Amen? Amen. Notice with me now in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was, was placed over the three presidents, as chapter 6 verse 2 tells us. He, King Darius made him ruler over the kingdom and over these uh, presidents. And verse 3 says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents, and princes, because for what purpose? For what reason? Because an excellent spirit, what was? Was in him. My brothers and sisters, as you know, many of you know, I'm sure, reading the story of Daniel there, he was in captivity. But there was a crisis that was coming upon Daniel now. Daniel did not know about this crisis. We have what is called crisis that we are expecting, right? We know from reading prophecies, there are crises uh, brewing around the horizon. And we can feel the impact of them today. And we can see them being developed, developing in the news. But there was a crisis coming Daniel didn't know about. But the Bible tells us that he already had an excellent spirit in him. So Daniel was already prepared for whatever crisis that God allows to come his way. Amen? Amen? Notice with me again. Then this Daniel was preferred, verse 3 again, above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasions against Daniel concerning uh, the kingdom. Occasion against Daniel concerning what? The kingdom. But, they say, they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was. What's the word? Faithful. faithful. How did they know, my brothers and sisters, that Daniel was faithful? They've been watching him. My brothers and sisters, the world is watching. Yeah. Spirit of prophecy tells us that the world is watching us right now before they can make a decision. They've been hearing about us. They've been hearing about this remnant, this group of Revelation 12, verse 17, and Revelation 14, verse 12. But we are told that they are watching, they're waiting to see what manner of people that we are in these last days. And so Daniel was being observed without him knowing about this. But he lived the life. Amen? Amen? He lived the life. An excellent spirit was found in him, the Bible says. Again, they could not find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. What a witness, my brothers and sisters. What a witness. And... We are told this is the kind of people that we need to be in these last days. Verse 5 now. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion. How many? Any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it. How? Against him concerning what? Concerning the law of his God. That was a diabolical plan, my brothers and sisters. So my brothers and sisters, they admitted that they could not find fault against this Daniel. Why? Because there was an excellent spirit within him. But now they devised another way. 
Let's go against Daniel. Let's devise a plan that would be contrary now to the law of his God. And then to see what happened. My brothers and sisters, the, wor the world is meeting right now. They are meeting right now. They are devising plans right now. They've already studied this little group called Seventh-day Adventists. They already know about us, my brothers and sisters. Just like they knew about Daniel here. They already know. There was one priest who gave his testimony. Uh, he knew everything about Seventh-day Adventists. And he even said that it was their duty, their job, to study us, to learn about us. And my brothers and sisters, Daniel will find himself in a similar situation. Revelation chapter 14, 12 tells us the same thing. Revelation chapter 12, 17 says the same thing. There is a group of people that the world is keeping their eye on. And right now, the world is meeting. And it, I'm not just talking now about just the secular world now. I'm talking about even uh, those daughters uh, that Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 describes who are the children of Babylon. They are meeting together right now in Paris against this little group. Now, let's keep reading here. Verse 7, And all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a what? A royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask, what's the word? A petition of any god or men for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into what? The den of lions. My brothers and sisters, we talked about this last week. The world now is meeting together. They are about to sign an agreement. All of the head of state, they told them that they must sign this agreement on so-called climate change, global warming, to give their power and allegiance unto the beast as we studied last time in Revelation chapter 17. So now we have a similar situation here. Now these folks came together and devised a plan that would go against the law of Daniel, the God of Daniel, and to cause him or to force him to compromise. My brothers and sisters, that's what we call fear. What does the Bible says about fear about and love? Perfect love casts out all, all fear. So my brothers and sisters, they came up with this plan to go to the king that no one should worship, should petition no other god but King Darius for 30 days. And if someone were to get caught worshiping, praying to another god, they would be thrown in the lion's den. Now they went to the king Verse 8, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it may not change. What they're doing in Paris right now, my brothers and sisters, once they come up with an agreement, which today I believe they say that they will come up with an agreement. When, once they come up with the agreement, then it will be the law, not just the law of the land now. It will be a global law, a global decree, and we saw that the papacy within the encyclical Laudato Si on climate change says that the objection that it's Sunday law. And Sunday observance, is that contrary to the law of God? Yes, yes my brothers and sisters. That's what we are facing now, my brothers and sisters. And now, listen now. 2015 has been a year that my brothers and sisters, when 2016 comes, we're going to look back and remember all of what took place in 2015. 2015 has been setting up the stage for 2016. My brothers and sisters, once they come up with this agreement, which by the way, the very next thing, or part of that agreement, it's a religious law, my brothers and sisters. This was a religious law they, they came up with here. This was a religious law. 
And so now, once that religious law is passed, notice with me on the screen, December 8, 2015, NBC News, Pope Francis opens door on his uh, holy year of mercy. My brothers and sisters, when they passed that law, when King Darius fell for this and passed that law, it was a religious law. You only had one way out. There was only one person you could worship. It was only King Darius. Pope Francis, year of jubilee, is calling for the exact thing, my brothers and sisters. It's calling for the exact things. We have problems in our world. Terrorism problem. We have uh, climate change problem. We have all of these problems. Now we need a, a, to pass a law. A holy year of uh, mercy. The jubilee year. Which begins December 2000, 8, 2015. And ends in November 20, 2016. This is where we are, my brothers and sisters. But the Bible tells us, go now with me to Matthew. We'll come back later to the book of Daniel. Matthew chapter 24. We've been studying about the signs of the times. Jesus, the disciples came to Jesus. They asked him for signs that would indicate that his coming is near. And some of the things that Jesus shared with them was the calamities that would take place. That persecution that would come upon them. In verse 9 of Matthew 24, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of how many nations? All. Of all nations for my name's sake. Notice with me now, verse 15 of the same chapter, Matthew 24 now, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by who? Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever le readeth, let him uh, understand. Whosoever spend the time studying for themselves, let them understand that the time that we're living in. My brothers and sisters, these things didn't happen by accident. The Pope didn't call for action on climate change and then call for a year of jubilee just out of coincidence. These things were planned, my brothers and sisters. Those four crises, those crises that they've been inventing, both on climate change and also uh, the, and the social aspect, the shootings, and all of these things that have been taking place so that they can enforce laws. These things didn't happen by accident. They planned them so that they can come up with a year of mercy, a year of uh, jubilee when uh, within this uh, year of jubilee where the Pope says he will open the, the, the doors wide open and you can only find mercy as you walk through those doors. Notice with me, my brothers and sisters, what it says here. Persecution is coming upon us. Great Controversy, page 608. Conscientious obedience to the Word of God will be what? Treated, Treated as a rebellion. Isn't that what Daniel was facing, my brothers and sisters? Go back now to Matthew chapter 24, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea, Jesus says, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on what? On the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his uh, clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye, now notice now, but pray ye that your flight be not where? In the winter, neither on the which day? Sabbath day. Sabbath day. Question for you now, my brothers and sisters. When did this happen? The destruction of Jerusalem that Jesus foretold here, both here in the book of Matthew and also in uh, Luke chapter 21. When did that happen? Almost 40 years after he made that statement. Amen? Almost 40 years later, the disciples were expecting to keep the Sabbath even Almost 40 years later, because it's part of God's law. Which law in these last days would be in question? My brothers and sisters, when they, when they said to King Darius, 
to enforce this law, to pass this law, that no one should worship any other God for, except you for 30 days. Which law of the Ten Commandments here they were targeting? No, uh, no, not the Sabbath. The first one more specifically, amen? Amen. Just want to make sure you get this right here. The first one. So God's law will be in question again, my brothers and sisters. Noting with, notice with me on your screen. Blinded by Satan, the parent will exercise harshness and uh, severity toward the, the believing child. The master or mistress will oppress the commandment-keeping uh, servant. Affection will be alienated. Children will be disinherited and driven from home. This is referring to when the Word of God comes to a home, it will divide the home. Even children, some children will be making a stand in these last days for, for, for Jesus. But there will be parents who will keep those children from following Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I've seen this. Where I came from in Oregon, I've seen this. Where we have uh, children who want to make a stand. They hear the message, the present truth message, and they want to make a stand. They see the apostasy going on within the regular line, and their parents are keeping them from joining the movement that God is raising in these last days. I've seen them. I know families, my brothers and sisters, who are keeping their children from embracing present truth. Notice with me, it says again, the words of Paul will be fulfilled, literally fulfilled. All that will live what? Godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffered persecution, 2 Timothy 3, 12 now, as the defenders of truth refuse to honor the Sunday Sabbath, some of them will be thrust into what? Into prison. Some will be exiled, some will be what? Treated as what? Slavery will be making a comeback, my brothers and sisters. Slavery will be making a comeback. My brothers and sisters, this is talking about you and I who are facing the end of the world right now. And it says, to human wisdom, all this, everything she just described here, all this now seems impossible. But as the restraining spirit of God shall be withdrawn from men, the heart can be what? Very cruel when God's fear and love are removed. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a serious time when we are going to see the fulfillment of what we just read in the screen here. So the Pope called now for a year of Jubilee. Notice with me on your screen. It says, chronic.com, Pope Francis opened doors to year of mercy. In what? In a time of what? And a time of fear, that December 11, 2015. So my brothers and sisters, notice now the timing of that. They said, he opens the doors of mercy in a time of fear. So do you think that these things happen by accident? In a time of fear, my brothers and sisters. So we need now to rush now to go through the, those doors of mercy. Because we're living in a time of fear. In a time of terror, notice with me now, Revelation chapter 14. Where we are going, my brothers and sisters? Revelation chapter 14. So the Pope says, we're living in a time of, of fear. So now, what a perfect opportunity now to open the doors of mercies for that, so that we can find a safe refuge. Amen? Revelation chapter 14, looking at the three angels' messages, but more specifically, verses 6 and 7 there. It says, And I saw another angel fly where? In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to what? To preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying, with a, what kind of voice? With a loud voice. What's the next word? Fear who? Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His uh, judgment is uh, come. And worship Him, Him only, that made uh, heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. My brothers and sisters, the law that these folks came up with to enact, to cause King Darius to pass. 
to put fear upon Daniel so that Daniel can forsake his God and worship King Darius instead of the living God. Similarly, Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 says, The call is to worship the true God, fear the true God, and worship Him. Judgment is coming. And the Bible tells us in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, who remember what it says here, Fear God and keep His uh, commandments, for this is what? The whole duty of man. But what is man saying? What is the Pope saying now? Because we have a fear crisis in our world today. Come through the holy door and worship me. And they're using this fear tactics upon us. Notice what this article says here. You want to be free and dead? U.S. Can candidates wave freedom versus what? Security over Muslims, RT.com, November 20th, 2015. Billionaire entertainment Magul and major party donor him, Sabin, who donated a seven-digit sum to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, telling news website The Wrap, it is high time to reconsider, notice now, it is high time to reconsider values and put life ahead of what? Ahead of what? Save all the liberties. You want to be free and dead? I'd rather what? Be not free and what? Oh, let's sacrifice our freedom now because we're living in a time of fear. Radical Islam, terrorism, and so-called fundamentalists are uh, all over the place. So let's sacrifice our freedom now. Let's hand over our freedom now, our basic freedoms now, and hand it over to the government so that the government can keep us safe. Notice also this article. It says, France 24, November 22, 2015. Headline, are French civil liberties another victim of Paris attacks? In the wake of the terrorist attacks in Paris, France has enacted a three-month state of what? Emergency, widening the powers of police and security agencies. It has done so, notice now, it has done so with what? Relatively little public debate about the what? Deterioration of what? Civil liberty. So there's so much fear. There's so much chaos in the world. So we, we don't hear outcry anymore. As long as they're keeping us safe, do whatever you want. That's the plan. That's the tactic in these last days. It goes on to say, to say, same article here. It says, French lawmakers in both the National Assembly and Upper House Senate uh, last week wildly approved an escalation of security which will allow authorities now brother what? Use of what? House arrest, electronic bracelets, and warrantless what? Searches. Then it says, the law, notice now, it says the law, unjust laws, my brothers and sisters. The law also allows the interior ministry to what? Unilaterally shut down what? Website and social network accounts that are seen as what? Justifying or what? Inciting. My brothers and sisters, this, this is key words for the remnant. Those who preach the Three angels' messages. This is just a smoke screen, my brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, let me show you how they describe what they call now so-called terrorists or fundamentalists. Here's how they, they describe them. Very plainly, and they're not hiding this. Notice, BBC News, the government invites you to be wary of those who do not eat what? Baguettes. Notice now, it says the French government launched a website to counter, to counter terrorism, its message of national unity aimed at young people who could be what? What's the word? Radicalized. As well as the general public quickly made a splash on the internet. Notice now, the site was liked 17,000 times on Facebook, just like that. Its official Twitter hashtag 
was used 1,200 times, and a slick video meant to counter jihadist recruiters got over half a million hits. If you look at the picture there to your left, this is how they are alarming the public about those who might be radicalizing, who, who those who that how you can see if somebody is being recruited by the Islamic group or turning into a terrorist person. It could be your next door neighbor. Have you ever heard of something that's called homegrown terrorists? The terrorists? Have you ever heard of this? My brothers and sisters, when they invented that, it's because they, they, they had their specific target. Notice on the, on, on the picture there, they show that if someone all of a sudden changing their diet to a vegetarian diet, that's what they are being radicalized. If they stop watching television, they are being radicalized. If they stop watching movies and, and certain type of music and don't participate in a competition sport, they are being radicalized, my brothers and sisters. Notice also what it says. It spells out eight telltale signs of radicalization for people to watch out for in others, such as withdrawing from friends and family. What did we just read? Who are they describing, my brothers and sisters? The whole time they've been talking about the terrorists and the Islamic State. They, they were really targeting us. Now they're telling you and I, my brothers and sisters, what they're doing. All of these unjust laws that are being passed, it's not really to keep you and I safe. Notice what, what they're saying. If they're quitting a sporting activity, terminating all friendships, and changing the way you dress? My brothers and sisters, how could this be more plain? They're telling you right now, what, who are they really targeting? It says, the most cutting remarks were about the warning that those who change their eating habits are likely to become. The health message talk that we just had this morning, this sister here was trying to radicalize us. That's what they're saying, my brothers and sisters. I didn't know I was being radicalized. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, they're doing the same thing again. And this is why the Pope is calling for a year of jubilee. You know what happened? History tells us that when, when the Pope passed a decree that the Waldensians should come back to the Mother Church, and they gave them a certain amount of time to do so. And when they refused to do so, they persecuted them. The door of Jubilee, the door of mercy, the year of Jubilee, it's the same thing the Pope is calling for. Now they've already saying that this group of people that have these characteristics are the one we should look out for in these last days, my brothers and sisters. Now they are inviting you and I out of fear to come to the mother church before it's too late. So we have about a year, my brothers and sisters, to walk through those uh, so-called holy doors of mercies and we'll be persecuted. Again, Ecclesiastes 13, uh, four, uh, let's go back. What does Ecclesiastes says again? 12, 13. Did I get it right? 12, 13. What does it say again? The, Fear God and for this is what? And what can men do to us, my brothers and sisters? My brothers and sisters, we cannot compromise. We are this close. We are about to cross the River Jordan. And what's waiting for us on the other side? The promised land, my brothers and sisters. We are right here. We just need to hang on. We're going to see our Savior anymore. Revelation 14, 12 tells us, here is the patience of the saints. My brothers and sisters, we're going to face a time similar to the time Daniel, a crisis similar to the one that Daniel was facing there. And notice what this article says as well. 
The Wall Street Journal, November 26, 2015. Prof. Francis tackles what? Islamic extremism and what? At the same time, climate change. Pop warns young people are being, what's the word again? Radicalized in the name of religion to so what? Discord and what's the next word? Fear. Fear. Young people now are being radicalized. My brothers and sisters, this is our liberty of conscience. Our right to worship God according to the dictate of our heart is being threatened right now. My brothers and sisters, what's, what's about to take place, what's waiting for us right now, two things. We're going to we're gonna need boldness to preach this message. Revelation 14, the three angels' messages. The righteousness by faith in the Son of God that the world is dying for, my brothers and sisters, right now. We're going to need to take that message in the face of this hostility. They're making it illegal for us, as I've shared so many times, to preach that, that message. They're saying that we are, when we present these messages, the health message, along with the gospel message, we are radicalizing people now. That's what they said, my brothers. We are radicalizing people now. So we are now terrorists, fundamentalists, bigots. Desire of Ages, page 630. The authorities will make what? Laws to restrict religious liberty. They will assume the right that is God's alone. They will think they can force the conscience which God alone should control. Even now, they are making a beginning. They, even now, they are making a beginning at that. This work, they will continue to carry forward now till they reach a boundary over which they cannot step. My brothers and sisters, God will make an end to this. Amen. When the people came to build the Tower of Babel, did God put an end to, them, to this? They thought that they were going to succeed in those plans, in that rebellion against God. But God put an end to that. Notice, God will interpose in behalf of who? His loyal, commandment-keeping people. Jesus says, in this world, you will have what? Tri tribulation. You will have trouble. But what? Be in uh, good cheer, because I've overcome uh, the world. He gave us the promise, my brothers, and sisters, my, my brothers and sisters, so that we don't focus or discourage when trials, when persecution come upon us. That promise one of, the most, one of the most beautiful promises in the Bible found in John 14, 1 to 3. What does it say there? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my fathers are many mentioned. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare what? A place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also. But my brothers and sisters, the world is trying to make you and I to forget about these promises. They using fear tactics now. Notice another article. It says here, what is a jubilee? What is a jubilee? Answer. In the Catholic Church, a jubilee or a holy year is a religious event that involves the what? The forgiveness of what? Sins. Sins. As well as reconciliation. The idea of jubilee dates back to the Bible. And it says here, quoting from Leviticus 25.10, it says, And you shall sanctify the 50th year. Notice it says the 50th year and proclaim freedom throughout the land for all who live on it. But, notice now, but a pope now can proclaim an extraordinary year of jubilee when he what? Deems are necessary. When he wants to. My brothers and sisters, let's go now. Let's do the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23. Which book are we going to? We're going to Leviticus chapter 23. That is blasphemy, my brothers and sisters. Only God can proclaim a year of jubilee. But notice, it also says that it's 
it should happen every what? 50th year. But my brothers and sisters, last time the so-called popes, the kings of this, of this world, proclaimed a year of jubilee was 15 years ago. But we are told that this pope is a pope in a hurry. He, he could not wait, wait another 35 years to proclaim another year of Jubilee, but because they are God on earth, so now he has a year of Jubilee. Notice with me now, in Leviticus chapter 23 now. But what comes in Leviticus chapter 23, we find all of the feasts mentioned there. There are one feast that comes after another, and the year of Jubilee was the last one. It was not the first one there, my brothers and sisters. It was not the one that the papacy is pushing for right now. Notice with me in Genesis chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 23. Beginning in verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Notice now, it says in their seasons. There's a time for everything, right? Yes. In their season. And who established these uh, seasons? God. Only God can say when things should be. Only God can say when winter should come. He established those patterns, these seasons. Again, Verse 5, in the 14th day of the first month, at even, is the Lord's what? Passover. Passover. Is the Lord's Passover. So that's the first feast there. That's the Lord's Passover. Now who is our Passover, my brothers and sisters? Jesus. That's Jesus. Where do we see that? Where do we see that? Where, where did the Bible confirm that? That Jesus was our pastor. Go with me now. Keep a finger now to the book of, in the book of Leviticus. Go to John. We are studying here. And by the way, if you would like a sermon note, just let me know and I'll get that to you. But next week, by God's grace, we'll, we'll have some sermon notes available here. But in the meanwhile, I can send that to you if you would like a sermon note. Notice John chapter 8, verse 36 are you there, saints? Are you there? John chapter 8, verse 36. And notice what the scripture says here. It says, If the Son therefore shall what? Make you what? Free, you shall be free. Okay, what is that saying? So when, where was the children of Israel when the Passover, when that angel came, that when they celebrate the feast of Passover, where were they? What does Egypt represent? Sin. It represents the world. But if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus is our Passover. He's the one who set us free. Now notice the next one there, verse 6. And on the 50th day of the same month is the what? Which feast comes next? Is the feast of what? Are you seeing the context there? So... Jesus is our Passover. He died for you and I on Calvary's cross. We must come to Him and bring our sins at the foot of the cross so we can be set free. And after we are set free, what must we do? Partake of the unleavened bread. But notice, and on the 15th day of the, seven, of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread. Why unleavened? No yeast unto the Lord. What does yeast represent again? Sin. It represents sin. No, notice now. Seven days ye must what? Eat what? Unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Go with me now to 1 Corinthians. We'll come back here. 1 Corinthians. Which book are we going now? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 7. My brothers and sisters, we need to be grounded in the Word. Time is drawing to a, to a close. Jesus is coming soon. We need to know what it does say the Lord. Many are being deceived right now because of this year of Jubilee. They don't know these things. They don't know what's happening. Jesus is our Passover. 
Jesus is the one who paid the price for you and I. Jesus is the one who's in heaven right now, making intercession for you and I. Jesus is our jubilee, not the Pope. Notice with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse 7 now. And the scripture says, Purge what? Out therefore what? The old leaven, that ye be a new lump, as ye are what? Unleavened, for even what? Notice. Christ our what? Passover is what? Sacrifice for us. Now notice now, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 and 6, which describe the Passover feast and also the feast of unleavened bread. Paul now addressed this in that one verse there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. So when we accept Jesus as our Passover lamb, we must, we must what? Purge ourselves of what? Of all sin, which is uh, the yeast there. Eat unleavened bread. Notice the next feast now, back now to Leviticus 23, verse 10. Leviticus 23, verse 10 now. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the what? Unto what? Unto the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall what? Bring a sheaf of the what? First uh, fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now, who was our first fruit, my brothers and sisters? Go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Let's look at the chronological order there of the feast and how Jesus fulfilled these things in your behalf and in my behalf and how we can overcome. The Bible says that Jesus set for us an example that we must follow. 1 Corinthians, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 now. And we're looking at which verse again, my brothers and sisters? Chapter 15, looking at verse, verse 20. Are you there? But now is Christ what? Reason what? From the dead and become what? The first fruit of them that what? That, that of them that slept. So you see that how Christ was fulfilling those feasts there, but they were in chronological order. Are you following? They were in chronological order. Now notice now the next thing that happened. Verse 16. Well, let's back up. Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave of offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number how many days? Fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Which, which feast is he referring to here? This is the day of uh, Pentecost. He's referring to Pentecost. Go with me now to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Notice in the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus is about to go to heaven. And he gave the disciples a command. In Acts, chapter 1 now, beginning in verse... Let's see there in verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is what? Not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall, notice now, ye shall what? Receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye what? Shall what? Be what? What does the word witnesses mean again? Martyrs. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of what? Of the earth. My brother said, going back to the chronological order as we're looking at the feast there. What was the first thing? It was the Passover. The lamb was sacrificed, representing Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for you and I. That's when we come to Him and bring our sins and forsake sins. And as we come to Jesus Christ, amen, as we come to Him 
and ask for forgiveness of our sins. We confess our sins to Him. He expects us. He gives us the power to go back now and live a life that has been purged. The second feast now. That has been purged from sin, from the yeast. What was the next thing that happened? The third thing that happened? The first fruits. What does that mean? We are free from sin. It was a celebration, my brothers and sisters. We are the first fruit, just like He overcame sin, my brothers and sisters. He overcame sin for you and I. Now, what happened next? The Pentecost. So, my brothers and sisters, what was promised to, Jesus, to the disciples here? The Holy Spirit was promised to them. But did they receive it the same day? They had to purge out the yeast from their heart first. They had to purge it out before they could receive the power now to go out and be martyrs for Jesus. And that was, Jesus made that promise to them, gave, gave them that promise on the last day before he left. What day was that? That was the 40th day. Notice Acts chapter one, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with what? One accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were what? But what, what, what was the key thing there? They were all with what? One accord. The day of Pentecost. That was 10 days now after Jesus gave that promise to them. That they were going to receive power. He spent 40 days with them. 10 days later, after they were willing to forsake all. And God poured out that promise unto them. My brothers and sisters, we need this promise in these last days. But we cannot receive it. Without fasting, just like the disciples were doing, being in one accord and praying. To forsake all, my brothers and sisters. Go back now to Leviticus chapter 23 again. So we looked at the fourth feast now. The, now, number five, verse 24 of Leviticus chapter 23. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the, what month? Seventh month. In the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of what? What, what, what does it say? Blowing of a trumpet, a holy what? Convocation. My brothers and sisters, Revelation described the, of blowing trumpets, the seven trumpets. Seven last trumpets. What does that mean to blowing up the trumpets? It's alerting you of what's coming. Something is coming. It's letting you know it's time to prepare. But what was coming? Notice the next thing that, that happened. 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be what? A day of... A That's what was coming. A day of atonement was coming. My brothers and sisters, are we living in a day of atonement right now? In the time of atonement right now? According to Revelation 14 now, verse 7, go back now, Revelation 14, verse 7, what does it say? It says, uh, fear God and do what? Verse 6, fear God and give glory to Him. Verse 7, for the hour of what? His uh, judgment has come. And worship Him that do what? Made heaven and earth. So my brothers and sisters, are we living in the anti-typical day of atonement? Are we living in that time? Worship Him. But the world is saying, look to Pope Francis now. Forget about the day of atonement. The investigative judgment. That's, that, that is taking place in heaven right now. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, we looked at that this morning. It says that measure the temple of God and them that dwell therein. We are being measured, my brothers and sisters. But the, the world, the papacy wants you to forget about what's taking place right now. 
Don't look up like Jesus says. When you see all these things begin to come to pass, then look up. But the Pope is telling us to look down here. I have a year of Jubilee. Look up, look down here, my brothers and sisters. So that's number six. So far, have we seen a year of Jubilee yet? There's no year of Jubilee. Notice now, going back to verse 27. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy now convocation or consecration or of gathering together unto you. And ye shall, what's the next few words there? Afflict your souls, my brothers and sisters. Purge out the old leaven from us. There's a day of reckoning coming. My brothers and sisters, Jesus had more to do than just dying for you on the cross. The Bible tells us, Paul says that. If Christ had not raised from the dead, our faith would have been what? In vain. Why? Notice with me on the screen. Because over here, the altar of sacrifice here represents the cross. Amen? It represents the cross. That's where Jesus died. But notice now, there are two more stages in the plan of salvation. There are two more stages. Six steps, two stages. And the next stage is the holy place. Amen? Are you with me? The next st stage is the holy place. Justification in the outer court. Sanctification in the holy place. Glorification now, the last stage now. In the most holy place, the day of atonement. Afflict your soul, my brothers and sisters. Revelation chapter 10 tells us there was a great disappointment that took place in 1844. And, I, and they were told that they needed to go back and preach the message of the soon returned Savior. But they were also, as we just quoted from 11, chapter 11, verse 1, that the answer, the clue, was found in the holy place, in the sanctuary. That explains the disappointment. This group, this movement that you and I are part of right now. And if you are a visitor here, a guest here, you are not a Seventh-day Adventist, we welcome you here. God has raised a movement. It's a movement that He has entrusted a message, an end time message to. A people that will keep the commandments of God and the faith or the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The whole Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath, that the majority of the world have forsaken. Just like Daniel was facing an unjust law, that would cause him, bring fear upon his soul to go against the commandments of God. And that's exactly what we see taking place. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, have entered the most holy place. October 22nd, 1844. Making what? Intercession. Intercession which, is, which is what? A type which was the Day of Atonement, was a type of what Christ is doing for you and I now. But what happened after that? Notice back now. Verse 28. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. My brothers and sisters, we should say hallelujah right now. Because Christ, the Bible tells us, the book of Hebrew, He, is not, he has entered what? The, the, the what? The sanctuary that is in heaven where he can appear before God himself, the Father, to make intercession. We don't need an earthly priest now, as Pope Francis now has portrayed himself. We don't need an earthly priest anymore. Jesus now is turning our attention to what's taking place in the real sanctuary that is in heaven now. Verse 29, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be what? Afflicted in that same day, what will happen to that soul? He shall be cut off from among uh, his people. Verse 32, it shall be unto you a Sabbath, that's the day of atonement of rest, and, he sh and ye shall what? 
afflict your souls in the ninth month, day of the month, of at even, from even unto even, shall what? Shall you celebrate the Sabbath? Those of you who are guests here, who are wondering why we worship on this day, and when is the Sabbath? Well, the Bible just said, from even to even, and you celebrate the Sabbath. From Friday, Friday evening to Saturday evening, it's the Sabbath. My brothers and sisters, what day are we living in again? In the day of atonement. Time is running out. Let's look at what comes next. If we afflict our souls and bring all our burden and make, make it right with God, on the day of atonement, the priest goes in there and make atonement for the people. And after that, the next feast that comes was the feast that's found in uh, Leviticus chapter 25. Notice with me. Verse 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbath of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shall thou cause the what? The trumpet of uh, Jubilee. Notice now, to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And then it says, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth, how many? Fiftieth year and proclaim liberty through all what? The land. But in order to proclaim liberty, we must gain the victory over sin first, over the years first. Notice, continuing the verse there, And proclaim liberty throughout all the land, and unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his uh, family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap, nor that which groweth, of itself in it, nor gather, gather the grapes in it of thine vine undressed, for it is the jubilee. It shall be a holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Here's what the Bible is saying here. Remember, this was a type. The Bible tells us here that you on, this, on that Pacific year of jubilee you shall do what you shall not sow neither what reap that which groweth of itself in it my brothers and sisters they were the the children of israel were told that they should give the land a rest for a whole year six years they they what they worked the land and and let the land rest for a year when does the year of jubilee begin the year of Jubilee that you and I are expecting. When Christ comes, when Christ comes, the year of Jubilee begins. We cannot have a year of Jubilee right now. Because Christ is still making intercession for you and I in the most holy place. So we cannot, we must overcome sin first. Then uh, when He comes, 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 16 and 17 tells us, And the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven, what? With a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And what will happen? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then it says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be cut up. Hence the day, the year of Jubilee begins. And we will be with Him up there for a thousand years. Notice with me now, Revelation chapter 20 now. Go to Revelation chapter 20. Are you with me, saints? Yes. We're going to Revelation chapter 20. And looking at verse 6, the year of uh, Jubilee now. We cannot have a year of Jubilee because we must overcome sin. The work that Christ is doing for you and I in the most holy place is not done yet. But it's coming to a close, my brothers and sisters. Notice Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. This is... Uh, 
parallel with 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Blessed and holy is he that hath what? Part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath uh, what? No power, but they shall be what? Priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him what? A thousand years. That's the year of Jubilee. That's when we're going to celebrate. And then uh, the Bible tells us that after that, we're going to celebrate even more. We're going to come back to this earth. After our enemy have been turned into ashes and be as uh, dirt on their, the, under our feet. The Bible tells us also in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. Notice it says, And I saw a new heaven, and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw what? The holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepare what? As a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will what? Dwell with them, and they shall be his uh, people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's the year of Jubilee, my brothers and sisters. Notice verse 4. And God shall what? Wipe away all tears from their eyes, and they shall be no more deaf, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be what? Any more pain. That's the freedom. That's the liberty that you and I should be looking for in these last days. And it says, For the former things, what? I pass away. That's the year of Jubilee. Until then, there's an investigative judgment going on. Jesus is our Jubilee. Jesus will come and put an end. But my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us, and Spirit of Prophecy tells us, there is a counterfeit for every truth of God. So the Pope is calling for a year of Jubilee. The, the head of state, the kings of the earth, are meeting now in Paris, are about to sign documents to restrict religious freedom, to give their power to the beast. And then the Pope will be crowned as a god. Notice what it says here. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Pope Leo the eighth encyclical. Notice it's on the encyclical. A letter of June 20th, 1844. So, not 1894. So why is he calling for a year of Jubilee? Because they hold upon the earth. So no wonder that the previous article tells us that. But the Pope can change the year of Jubilee and uh, have a year of Jubilee whenever they please to. Because they are God. Notice another article here from CNN Catholic Magazine. It says, Benedict the 16 will attend the holy door opening at Vatican to start year of mercy. The right of the opening of the holy door is intended to symbolically illustrate the idea that what? The church is faithful. I offered what? An extraordinary path toward what? An extraordinary path towards salvation. My brothers and sisters, if we don't go to the papacy, go quickly out of fear, we, we are the, those in this last day they call radicals or extremists or terrorists. But he's giving us a year to walk through those doors to find salvation. Notice it says, during the time of Jubilee, the doors are only open during Jubilee years. Notice it says the doors are only open during that time. And then those are the door of salvation. Those are the way of salvation. So that pilgrims can enter through them in order to gain the plenary, what? Indulgence that is what? Connected with uh, Jubilee. What is indulgences? You... That's right. You are paid to commit a sin. You, you can pay. Let's say you want to uh, steal something. Go to the priest and tell him what you are about to do and pay for it. Then he gives you a certificate of indulgences. 
you are covered. Just go and commit the act. So who is creating this fear? Then it says, for the, the first time, holy doors will be designated in everyone. Notice now, diocese throughout where? For the first time. So my brothers and sisters, they have the plans. They have all the, they have many, they, do, they don't just have two doors now in the Vatican. They have doors throughout the world now, open right now. So what are they telling us? Well, they know there's a little pocket of fundamentalists throughout the world. So if we cannot make this pilgrimage to Rome, well, wherever you are, we, we need to find out if there's one here in South Florida. Then notice this other article here. It says, Catholic Online, the one reason why Pope Francis ordered an extraordinary jubilee, what, what's coming next for Christians? December 11th, 2015, along with every jubilee, is an indulgence, and this one is raising what? Eyebrows. Anything and everything can be what? Forgiven as long as the what? Penitent is truly sorry. Makes reconciliation, receive what? Remember I just said we need to find out if there's one here in South Florida? You don't just go there and walk through those doors and, and confess your sin to the priest. You must also partake of the communion. The, you remember I quoted that last time. That's part of the encyclical on climate change. It says you must keep Sunday and participate in the Eucharist in order to save the planet from so-called climate change. Notice. It says, receive a Holy Communion and passes through the Holy Door. It's a requirement, my brothers and sisters. You must come to the priest. You must bow, receive communion. Notice what this says here. Again, CNN Catholic Agency. Pope Francis says, be courageous, go to confession. Some say, I confess only to God. Yes, you can say, God forgive me. It is necessary to ask forgiveness from our brothers and sisters, and from who? From the church in the person of who? In the person of the priest. What do you see this uh, soul here bowing down to the papacy there? Sometimes when you're in line for confession, you feel, it says when you're in line conf for confession. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says that because we have a high priest now who've been what? through everything that we might, be, might go through. He knows what we go through. We can come boldly what? We don't need to be in line, my brothers and sisters. We don't need to stand in line for confession. But the Pope says, there's going to be a line. Sometimes when you're in line for confession, you feel all sorts of things, especially shame. But when your confession is over, you'll live free, great, beautiful, forgiven, clean, happy. This is what's beautiful about what? About confession. And so now, therefore, we have a year of Jubilee. BBC News says Pope Francis opened St. Peter's Holy Door to launch Jubilee, December 8, 2015. And notice now, here's the point here. Workers, it says, had to reveal what? The holy door of St. Peter's Basilica, which what? Had been behind a brick wall. These are the workers here. This is where these doors were, uh, uh, were behind the, these brick here. So they had to break that. And uh, now, before that door is shut, those doors are shut again. We must come through it. So those doors were hiding. So salvation, the path... It's symbolically, so the path to salvation w w was blocked. So now they, they open it. They're giving us one year, my brothers and sisters. South Florida, Wendland Oversea Church, we have one year. One year before they put those bricks back. Before they put those bricks back. So we have one year to go quickly to the priest. Well, remember what Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 tells us? 
it would speak what great blasphemous words against God. Notice, it says, the supreme teacher in the church is the who? The Roman pontiff, union of minds. Therefore, requires complete what? Submission and obedience of will to the church and to the Roman pontiff as to God what? As to God himself. So those little extremists, those little jihadists, those little bigots, those little pockets of fundamentalists that, as the Pope says, that we have, is giving us one year. And notice what it says in uh, the World Post. Pope Francis says, fights ISIS. Remember, code word here, smoke screen. Pope Francis fights ISIS by fostering inter what? Religious dialogue. Do you understand what that means? The way to fight these uh, extremists, these fundamentalists, we must bring all the religion uh, together. All the religion must come uh, together. And uh, they already have the head of states coming together. So all the religions must come together and be a voice on the so-called climate change, global warming. Notice what it says, December 12th. 4th, 2015. One cannot write off a religion because there are some groups or sometimes many groups of who? Fundamentalists. How many wars and not only wars of religion have we Christian waged? So who are the fundamentalists? Then he says, the Muslim were not responsible for the sack of Rome. Do you understand what he's saying? So we were, we Christian, these little pocket groups, were the ones who were responsible for the sack of Rome. Who are responsible for the three angels' messages in these last days to, to show who the beast is, to show the world who the Antichrist here? So we are sacking uh, Rome, my brothers and sisters. So therefore, they must come after us. Notice what they're saying that every group, right? Every religion has a pocket of fundamentalists. They're saying that Islam is a peaceful religion. It just has a little extremist within it. So the way they're putting this out there, my brothers and sisters, they're saying that the Islamic State, ISIS, it's just ha has been radicalized. But they don't speak for ISIS or Islam. They don't speak for Islam. So that means we can say the same thing. If there's a little group within uh, the Baptists that, that is so-called radicalized, they don't speak for the Baptists. Oh, let's talk about Seventh-day Adventists now. If there's a little group within Seventh-day Adventists who still believe that the papacy is the Antichrist, they don't speak for the world church. This is where this is going. Notice, it says, key quotes, from Obama's terrorism speech, December 7, 2015. President Ob Barack Obama sought on Sunday to come a nation put on edge, put on edge by fear, by the California shootings in a rare address to the nation on the threat posed by the Islamic State group. And then he says, here's some of the, what he says in his speech. Remember, it, key quotes from his speech. I saw, that's ISIS, does not speak for Islam. Remember that? It does not speak for Islam. This little group there within uh, this Islamic religion does not speak for Islam. Then it says, extremist ideology has spread within uh, some uh, Muslim communities, just as it is the responsibility of Muslims around the world to root, notice now, to root out misguided ideas that lead to what? Radicalization. So if each religion or each denomination has these little groups within them, the world church or the world body needs to pinpoint them out. Because they've been what? Radicalized. They are a disease that can infect the rest of you or the rest of the world. We, we must get rid of them. Then it says, it is the responsibility of all Americans of how many faith? Every faith? To reject discrimination. You see where this is going? And now, what they're doing, my brothers and sisters, 
they've, they're dividing us into two classes now. They're dividing us between uh, the acceptable Christianity and what they call the radicalized Christianity. And uh, Donald Trump's, Trump says something similar. Notice, Donald Trump's message to Muslims, we want you to what? To turn in the bad ones. What's going to be the message in these last days? To turn in the bad ones within you. So they're not saying that the Muslim religion is wrong or it's em have embraced this radicalization, what ISIS is doing. They're saying it's just a little group within them. So they must now turn in the bad ones. Yeah. Notice, December 8, 2015. The proposal is not unconstitutional, Donald Trump says, keeping people out until we get a hold on what's going on, Joe. Trump said, Roosevelt started what? Internment camps. Have you ever heard of uh, what? FEMA camps? Then it says, because he had to do it, adding, Look, we are at war with what? So we'll be at war with whom? With those uh, extremists within religions. My brothers and sisters, this is a serious time that we're living in. It is an exciting time. They're passing all type of unjust laws. But we shouldn't be surprised by this. I think it's uh, time for you and I to be more exciting because we can see the sign of our save soon return, returning Savior being fulfilled. Amen? Notice what, what this says here. Desire of ages. It says, on every occasion when persecution takes place, notice now, those witness it make what? Decisions either what? For Christ or against Him. Those who manifest sympathy for the ones wrongly condemned show their attachment for Christ. Others are offended because the principles of truth cut directly what? Across what? Their practice. Yes. My brothers and sisters, that's exactly why the Pope Francis, President Obama, Donald Trump, and others are reaching out to different groups of religion, different faith, faith to turn up those little extremists within them. Because it says here, those who may manifest sympathy for the ones wrongly condemned show their attachment for Christ. Others are what? Offended because the principles of truth cut directly across their practice. And so that means now, since it crossed against their practice, have we heard, my brothers and sisters, that we have moved away from talking about the papacy as the Antichrist? So that have moved what? I've cut away from the practice, from things that we want to preach, my brothers and sisters. So they what? They're going to turn those of us in. They're already saying that we must, we must what? Take action against those that are using the even social media. Hmm, I post things online as well. Then it says here, many stumble and fall, apostatizing from the faith they once ad, ad, who? advocating. Those who apostatize in time of trial will, to secure their own safety, bear false what? Hmm, it's coming. And betray their who? Christ has warned us of this, that we may not be what? At the unnatural, cruel course of those who? It's coming, my brothers and sisters. Do you know, my brothers and sisters? Again, the whole push for this is to win for Sunday. But this says here, in Signs of the Times, January 17, 1844, men were in responsible positions. Who are these men? The conference, the Seventh-day Adventists. Then it says, will not only ignore, despise the Sabbath themselves, but from the sacred desk will urge upon the people the observance of the first day of the week, Pleading tradition and custom in behalf of this man-made what? Institution. They will point to calamities. Remember that? Remember climate change? Yes. They will point to calamities on land and sea, to the storms of wind, the floods, uh, the earthquakes, the destruction by fire, as a judgment indicating God's what? Displeasure because Sunday is not sacredly observed. And what does this article says? 
exactly what spirit of prophecy tells us. Do we have a true prophet, my brothers and sisters? Notice what this says here on the screen. It says, slow Sunday, the simple solution to what? Global warming, using Sunday as a day of rest and renewal would be what? Good for what? Our personal health as well as the health of the... And notice also what this article says. How they're reaching out to all of the religious leaders. Not just the head of states. Not just the king of the world. Society, May 8th, 2014. UN climate chief says faith groups must what? Act on climate change. UN climate chief Christina Figueres has condemned climate change as one of the great humanitarian crises of our time, arguing that faith leaders, faith who? Faith leaders must take a stronger stance against it and encourage now, notice, encourage their followers to do what? The same. To do the same. So they're reaching out to all of uh, the religions, to all of the denominations, so that the, to the leaders, and also so that the, real, the leaders can encourage their congregation to take a stand. So you think they have reached out to the worldwide church as well? Yes. Notice what it says here, Adventist News Network. Seventh-day Adventists, we affirm commitment to preserving the environment. Then it says, what's the word? Go back to the previous, uh, previous slide. What does the previous slide say? It says they were reaching out to all faith leaders. To mu they must take a stronger stance against it. And then, what's the word? Okay, what does it say? Encourage all members to be what? Good stewards. As world leaders gathered in Paris for the 21st United Nations Climate Change Conference, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, su what? Support and what? Applaud the efforts of these leaders to come to an agreement to stem the deterioration of our earth due to what? Is it clear that we are in apostasy, my brothers and sisters? It couldn't be so more plain, my brothers and sisters. It is very But it has been proven that this is a hoax. This whole, the score uh, about climate change, it's a hoax, my brothers and sisters. They're, they're doing all these things to enforce laws because we are the one that they are calling extremists. It has been proven by so many well-known scientists that climate change is a hoax. Listen, this says a global warming petition over 31,487 American scientists have signed this petition, including 9,029 with uh, PhDs. That they said that, that all of them said that based on their study, there is absolutely no proof that uh, the ice is melting, that we have a climate change problem. But they deny all of that. They overlook all of that. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church is lining up with the papacy yeah. instead of proven fact that shows that we're not having a global warming climate change problem. Why they are not checking the fact? Well, because the papacy calls for it. And they've already been in bed with the papacy, so they must follow the leadership of the papacy, my brothers and sisters. And uh, they even admit that it's a hoax. Daily Caller, UN Chief, Global Warming, he says, not visible, but we will still need what? Global Treaty. See, they admitted it. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church says, we still need to support them. December 7, 2015, UN Secretary General Ben Ki-moon admitted that even if global warming can't be seen or felt by humans, the world should still agree to an international treaty to cut carbon dioxide emissions. This climate change, even if it is not visible, is the worst threat human beings. To human beings. It's not visible. Well, we can see the evidence of it, but we still need to enforce laws. And the, and the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists is telling us, just go for it, support it. How about support what the Bible says? 
How about, uh, how about supporting Revelation chapter 14 to show how the world is being deceived? How about that? How about supporting Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 that says, And the whole world wondered and what? Followed after the beast. How about we show that to the world? What an injustice we're doing to the world. We have all of these gems, all of these truths, and we are hiding them. And we are preventing those who want to take this message to the world. You must do it in the regular way. That's the call. Who gives you the authority to have a self-supported church? And many are offended because we have a self-supported church here. Notice what it says here. It says, Great Controversy, page 589 and 590. It will be declared that men are what? Offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. That this sin has brought what? Calamities, which will not cease until Sunday observance is what? Shall be what? Strictly enforced. So what Ben Kimun was saying was that we have no proof that we're having a global warming problem, but we still need to strictly enforce a law because our agenda is to come after those little groups. And then it says, and uh, that those that present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are what? What's another word for, the, for, for that? Terrorists. Terrorists. Are troublers of the people. Preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. Well, we are not going along with the so-called year of Jubilee. We are the one now preventing the divine favor of God upon the people. Because these things will increase even more. Those calamities will get even worse and worse. So the Pope now has a year of Jubilee. He's calling us to come back to the Mother Church. To find a solution to end the global warming. To confess to the priests. Forget about God. My brothers and sisters, the Bible asks us the question. We're living in a serious time. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11. It says, let's, let's read that together. Second Peter chapter 3. Which book are we going to, my brothers and sisters? We're going to the book of Second Peter chapter 3. Looking at verse 11. Seeing uh, then, are you there? Chapter, chapter 3 of Second Peter, verse 11. Now here's the appeal. The Bible says here, Seeing then that all these things shall be what? What manner of uh, persons ought ye to be? You can put your name there, I can put my name there. What manner of person I'm supposed to be in these last days? What manner of person are ye to be in how? In all what? Holy conversation and uh, godliness. Then verse 12 now. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heaven being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervent heat. We haven't seen anything yet. But what manner of people are we to be in these last days? We are told that we should spend quality time steady the closing scene of the life of Christ. Because what happened then will happen again to His followers. Notice what it says here. Desire of Ages, page 83. It would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should take it, notice now, we should take it how? Point by point. And then what? Let the imagination grasp each scene. Each scene of the life of, towards the end of his life here. And then let the imagination grasp it. Especially the closing ones. What happened in the closing ones? A crisis came, my brothers and sisters, to our Lord and Savior. A crisis. He was about to face a crisis, my brothers and sisters. Turn with me now to John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, Jesus was teaching some plain truth of the Bible, came straight from the throne of God. But there were many who were offended by what he was saying. 
They were offended. They did not want to hear it. There was a crisis coming, and Jesus was trying to prepare not only them, but also their disciples. And the Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 66, notice 666. <laughs> then it says here, from that time, many of his disciples, what? Went back, went back what? And what? No. Take for me. Is, that, is it a coincidence that it's John chapter 6, verse 666? Verse 66, 666. Notice what it says. It says, from that time, and many of what? Many of his uh, disciples went. Isn't that what we're told will, will happen? Then it says, and those who, who, uh, who do that in the last day, what will happen? They will receive the mark of the beast, 666. Then it says, then said Jesus unto the 12 now. Then says Jesus unto the remnant now. Then says Jesus unto us now, and ask the question, will ye also go away? There's a crisis coming, my brothers and sisters. And, and Jesus is telling us, it's coming. What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? My brothers and sisters, we know the answer. Peter gave the answer that you are the Christ. We're not going to go anywhere. You are the Christ. You have the word of the a life. We're not going to go in. We're going to stick with you. But my brothers and sisters, Peter didn't stand fast. When the crisis came to Peter, what did Peter do? What did Peter do, my brothers and sisters? He denied his Lord. When the crisis came, the disciples were not watching and what? Praying. Turn with me to Luke now. Luke chapter 22. Which book are we going to? Luke chapter 22, my brothers and sisters, there's a crisis coming. And there was a crisis coming to Daniel. And the Bible says he had an excellent spirit in him. And when that crisis came, the Bible tells us that Daniel was uh, praying. And Jesus was praying here in the garden, garden of Gethsemane. And the crisis came to them in Luke chapter 22, beginning, beginning in verse 43. And there appeared unto him... From uh, heaven, strengthening him, notice now, and being how? In agony. What's the next word? He prayed more earnestly. You remember that Jesus prayed that prayer how many times? Three times. He prayed that prayer three times, my brothers and sisters. He was in agony. He needed some human companion. He was facing a crisis. And he needed someone to stand by him and pray with him as he was in agony praying for himself. My brothers and sisters, Jesus' prayer was not just really for himself there. It was for you and I. Because he didn't have to go through this. And notice verse 44 again. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. But verse 43 tells us that as he was praying, he could not find a human companion. What did God do? God sent an angel to strengthen him. My brothers and sisters, we are, have entered a time when we need to spend time on our knees until God would send an angel to strengthen us. Cornelius was praying. He prayed and prayed in the book of Acts. He prayed until God sent an angel. My brothers and sisters, we need to have the same attitude in these last days. Jesus spent time on his knee in agony, fasting and praying. Cornelius spent time on his knee, fasting and praying. Daniel spent time in the lion's den, fasting and And then what happened on those three occasions? God sent an angel. It's time, my brothers, to spend time on our knees, fasting and praying. And we will not find comfort, here's the key there, we will not find comfort from human being. God will send angels to comfort us in those last days. God will send angels to comfort us. Likewise, Jacob was having a time of trouble, and he was all alone by himself, and the angel of the Lord came. My brothers and sisters, Jesus was in the garden Fasting and praying for you and I. There are things that the Bible says 
will never come out without those two things, fasting and praying. Remember that? Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 and 23. Notice with me now as we come to a close here. Matthew chapter 19, what does the Bible say? Matthew chapter 19, uh, 17, verses 19 through 23. The, Bible, the disciples came to Jesus. After he had sent them out, they did some healing, but there was someone that they could not heal. In verse uh, 19, then came the disciples. Matthew chapter 17, verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your what? Unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have what? Faith as a grain of mustard seed. Ye shall say unto this mountain, We move hence to yonder place, and it shall be moved, and nothing shall be what? Impossible unto you. How be it though, this kind goeth not about by, but by what? Prayer and fasting. What's the point here in light of what we're studying here? My brothers and sisters, what we must overcome in these last days, we can only overcome it by fasting and praying. Jesus spent a whole day without food. Daniel spent a whole night and day in the lion's den without food, fasting and praying. In these last days, my brothers and sisters, we can only overcome the, the yeast that, that is in the world right now, that is in us, by fasting and praying. As we close, notice what it says here on the screen. In uh, Signs of the Time, June 3rd, 1897, three times the prayer ascended to God, the prayer of Christ, always followed by what? But By the words, what? Not my will, but thine be done. Shall the cup pass from the suffering one? She's asking some questions now. Shall the sacrifice of Christ ordained before the foundation of of the world and symbolized in every sacrifice offered since Adam's transgression be given up? Do you understand what this is saying? Jesus was in agony. We are told that he could not see beyond the portal of the tomb. So what did he do? He spent the night fasting and praying so that he will not fall into the temptation and leave you and I in our mess. Then it says here, Shall the glorious purpose of God the Father and Jesus Christ His Son entered upon to save a perishing world to be of no account? Shall that which angels eagerly desire to look into and understand that which had been the burden of prophecy, that which lay at the foundation of times and shadows, fell, types and shadows, fell after all, leaving Satan and his apostate forces and what? Confederacy of evil to come of triumph? So these questions are there for you and I to ponder. That if the Son of, of God in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, if he had fell there, if he didn't spend time by fasting and praying to face the crisis that he was about to experience, he was not going to make it. And we would have never made it, my brothers and sisters. But thank God, He did it. He, he did it right? by the grace of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. We are facing a crisis, my brothers and sisters. The mark of the beast is about to be enforced. So what should we do in these last days? Fast and pray. My brothers and sisters, I appeal to you today to recommit your life to Jesus Christ, myself included, we're going to be having some baptism here on the first week of, first Sabbath of January. Is there anyone here who have never been baptized before, who would like to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ, who would like to study, who would like to learn about the sweet Jesus that you and I come to know, many of us here come to know. Anybody here would like to surrender their life to Jesus today? Like to be baptized. I see a young man there. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Amen. Like to study for yourself and accept Jesus as your personal Savior. See one hand. Anybody else? 
Anybody else? Anybody else? How about we baptism? We'll be having some we baptism as well. The first week of January, first Sabbath of January. Anybody here would like to recommit your lives to Jesus Christ through we baptism? Anybody would like to do that? We've already have some candidates. Is there anybody else who would like to do that? We baptism? Okay. My brothers and sisters, we are here. We have a short time to finish this work. Let us fast and pray. Let's Thank you.